Data breaches take seconds, but the average time it takes to fix them is measured in weeks, if not months. The company we're speaking to today aims to find and shut down these attacks in minutes. One problem is the level of buy-in at board level, and another is integrating global intelligence on hackers. Let's now hear from Jens Monrad, Global Threat Analyst at the cybersecurity company FireEye. I'm Linda Dubley. Welcome to the Business Debate. Jens, uh, welcome to the London Stock Exchange. It's great to see you here. Thank you for having me. Let me first start by asking you, why are we seeing so many more security threats than we've ever seen before? So I think we are seeing more uh, security threats and breaches uh, because of two reasons. One of them is that there is an increased media attention, uh, where media is a lot more focusing on organisations and how mature they are to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And the other reason is that with the uh, tax service area has been greatly expanded because of the way that we are conducting business today. Right. So, in more detail, can you describe for me what exactly does the threat landscape look like? Yeah, so at, at FIRE we see the threat landscape really consisting of three different types of attackers, if you like. One of them being, of course, cyber criminals that wants to obtain some sort of data that they can monetize. But then we also see the more advanced attacks that are politically motivated, uh, thinking of the more classical espionage or conducting industrial espionage. And lastly, we see attacks being carried out by hacktivist groups that could be against a specific industry that they don't agree with. So we believe that these cyber criminals are principally after money, but that's not the only reason, is it? You've just said there are several more. Yeah, and, and I think if we look at the internet as a whole and, and the way we are on the internet today as citizens and as corporations, uh, we do see a lot more politically motivated attacks. And those attacks has also become easier because the information is much more available today than it was maybe a few years ago. Now, how does the threat intelligence help when it comes to fighting these so-called bad guys? Yeah, so from an organization's perspective, it's very important to have information that you can put into your technical systems, but also have strategic information that you can help uh, your board and your leadership make the right decisions based on risk and also based on what to invest in. The issue is that sometimes these companies, they run the numbers and they decide, actually, it's cheaper to pay the ransom every once in a while than it is to actually introduce the right security measures. What do you do about coping with that scenario? Yeah, so we've seen a few incidents at FIRE where uh, victims were considering paying or they actually paid the ransom because they were looking at the numbers or they were looking at they needed the data back very quickly. So they were ending up in a situation where they were paying the ransom rather than going into the whole remediation process. And there are examples of some people agreeing to pay the ransom relatively quickly, aren't there? Yeah, we have seen, uh, especially in the US, we've seen one particular case with a hospital that ended up paying ransom because they were forced into a way of working that they gave up many years ago. And what do you believe now are the biggest challenges um, the biggest difficulties that face you now and will face you moving forward? So I think the biggest uh, challenge that we have in the information security space is that we find it much more complex and challenging to find cybersecurity talent. And we also see and hear the same thing from uh, respective governments in, in countries across Europe. And we are drawing talent from the same pool. Mm. And uh, it's typically because there isn't enough people are educated or in some countries there might even not be an education available that will uh, educate you into the cybersecurity space. So that's a question of investment, investment in enlarging the pool of expertise, isn't it really? Yeah. Um, so you as a Chief Information Security Officer, how do you use intelligence to position the cyber threat to the board? So here it's very, very important to have strategic information that will help you make decisions. And one of the things we at FIRE do is provide strategic intelligence that will help the leadership and the Chief Information Security Officer make the right decisions based on risk and not on technical analysis, but more based on, on risk that will help them make the right investments. Okay, so Jens Monrad, thank you so much for joining us here at the London Stock Exchange. Thank you. Well, join us next time and we'll be discussing on that occasion the latest innovations in fintech and smart cities. Mm -hmm.